Hey, what's up everybody? It's Izzy from Powerlifting and Win. And our next stop on the Powerlifting Programming Series is the Cone Felipe Deadlift Routine. Now, for those of you who are unaware, this isn't like an ebook or anything that you have to purchase. The Cone Felipe Deadlift Routine is widely distributed for free all across the internet. And if I had to speculate, I would actually say that this is probably the most popular deadlift routine of all time. Now with that said, it isn't a powerlifting program, it is just a deadlift routine. So we're not really going to evaluate it as a powerlifting program, we're going to evaluate it as a standalone deadlift routine. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at one of the most popular deadlift routines of all time. The Cone Felipe Program. As far as the history and background of the Cone Felipe routine goes, it's interesting to note that Ed Cone has never confirmed that he actually trained this way. In fact, I own Ed Cone's training DVDs and the programs that he was doing during his peak do not look like the Cone Felipe deadlift routine. He was not doing circuit style assistance, he was working up to a single top set on the deadlift and he wasn't doing any of the speed work stuff. Now it's curious that all of this speed work and conditioning made its way into the Cone Felipe deadlift routine. I can only speculate that the reason why this happened is because Eddie Cohn was trying to account for the fact that Mr. Felipe was a strongman competitor. And for those of you guys who are unaware, strongman has some very stringent conditioning requirements. So it makes sense that in addition to improving Felipe's work capacity, that we would try to improve his conditioning as well with these short rest periods and circuit style assistance work. But again, I do have to note that it doesn't appear that Ed Cohn ever actually trained this way. Nonetheless, pretty much everybody has used this routine from your average gym rat to power lifters to even some bodybuilders who have been trying to add size to their back. So it has a long track record of success and literally thousands of people have done this program. In order to really understand this program, it needs to be broken up into two parts. The main deadlift workout and then the assistance that you do afterwards. Now, if you guys want to see a preview of the whole program, I'm going to put a link to the spreadsheet for it in the description box. So check that out if you'd like. The main deadlift routine is as follows. As you can see, for the most part, you're working up to a single top set on the deadlift with progressively heavier poundages each and every single week. Keep in mind, these percentages are based off of your desired max, not your current max. Most people aim for about a 25 to 35 pound improvement over the 10 weeks. So when the program calls for 90%, that is actually quite a bit more than 90%, just for example. If you don't get stronger as this program goes on, you have no chance to finish it. Now. After your main deadlift set, you're going to be performing speed deadlifts. Realistically, these should be called work capacity deadlifts. You're working anywhere from 60 to 75% and doing multiple triples on limited rest. They're not going to end up being that fast by the end of it. This is nothing like west side speed work for the deadlift, which typically features singles and accommodating resistance. Most of these sets probably won't be that speedy by the end. They serve mostly to condition you to pulling in a fatigued state, and they greatly improve your deadlift work capacity. Okay, now we've got to the complicated part of the program, which is the assistance. It changes quite a bit throughout the program, so we're going to break it all down and take a look. Here we go. As you can see, the most complicated part of this program really is the assistance. In weeks one to four, you're going to be performing the following circuit three times, doing eight reps per set and resting 90 seconds between exercises. Stiff leg deadlifts, bent rows, underhand pull downs, and arch back good mornings. You should aim to increase the weights a bit each week. In weeks five through nine, you're gonna add power shrugs to the mix using the following percentages of your deadlift max. Week five, 60%, week six, 65%, week seven, 70%, week eight, 75%, and week nine, also 75%. In weeks five to six, you perform the following assistance work doing each exercise for three sets of five reps before moving on to the next exercise. And you're resting 90 to 120 seconds now. Power shrugs, stiff legs, bent rows, underhand pull downs, and arch back good mornings. Now, in weeks seven to eight, you do the exact same thing as weeks five and six, but you reduce the amount of sets per exercise to two instead of three. Remember, you're not doing circuits anymore. You're doing one whole exercise, then moving on to the next exercise. In week nine, you eliminate all the assistance exercises besides power shrugs and stiff legs. Still do two sets of five on those. In week 10, you're gonna perform no assistance at all. And if that's too much to keep track of, just grab a copy of the spreadsheet from the description box. 
As far as planning goes, as you can tell by looking at the program from before, this leads you right into a peak in week 11. So you don't need to design your own peak on Cone Felipe because you're expected to compete or do a max out on week 11. So in terms of periodization, the Cone Felipe routine uses a pendulum style of periodization. However, unlike the other pendulum style periodization programs that we've looked at, instead of swinging from hypertrophy to maximal strength, this program actually swings from work capacity to max strength. It's a, it's a bit of an interesting difference, so, so let's take a further look at what I'm talking about here. You'll notice that during the first four weeks of the program, you're only taking 90 second rests between your speed deadlift sets. And the assistant style work is performed in a circuit fashion. This higher volume period with lower rest sets the foundation for the rest of the program by getting you used to handling these higher workloads and greatly improving your work capacity through the low rest periods. Now in weeks five through eight, the volume is heavily reduced on your speed sets. You go to doing only three sets of three from doing a minimum of five sets of three during the first four weeks. You also stop performing your assistance exercises in a circuit fashion. Also your rest periods increase. So you can see that during weeks five to eight, the pendulum has begun to swing back towards maximal strength and at least a little bit away from work capacity. However, the emphasis on work capacity is still definitely there. It's not like two minute rests between sets are very long. Now, it isn't until weeks 9 and 10 that the full emphasis goes back to maximal strength. You'll notice that you have no planned rest periods between your speed sets during these weeks. You'll also notice that the assistance is cut down even further. In fact, it's almost completely dropped. You also switch over to doing mainly singles on your deadlift work sets and you're working at above 95%. So you can tell this is maximal strength peaking time. So you can tell with this periodization scheme, there's really three distinct periods. You have the first four weeks, which is a huge emphasis on work capacity and volume. Then in weeks five through eight, you shift that emphasis towards maximal strength, but you're still getting a heavy dose of work capacity improvement as your rest periods only increase by 30 seconds and you just stop performing your assistance in a circuit style fashion. It isn't until the last period in weeks nine through 11 where you're almost completely dropping the assistance and you don't have any more planned rest periods that the program shifts into a full emphasis on max strength. Okay, as far as programming goes, I'm gonna try not to be redundant, but the programming structure is very similar to the periodization structure. That is, it is a pendulum style, very typical of most Western programs and Western programming in general. In other words, you're gonna start with higher volumes and lower intensities, and over the course of a cycle, that's going to taper towards lower volumes and higher intensities. So in weeks one through four, you're doing between five and eight sets of triples on your speed work. You're also doing three sets of eight on your assistance. Now, when you get to weeks five through eight, you only do three sets of three on the speed work and it's getting progressively heavier. Your assistance drops down to three sets of five and then it drops down to two sets of five in weeks seven and eight. So you can see again, the intensity is going up and the volume is going down. Now this goes into full effect during weeks nine through 11 where you're almost doing no assistance at all. You drop down to only two assistance movements and you're only doing two sets of five. Likewise, on your speed work, you're down to two sets of three. And your main deadlift work goes to singles and is above 95% at that point. So you can see that the intensity has climbed, the volume has gone way down, and the programming has swung from week to week to week away from a maximal emphasis on work capacity towards a maximal emphasis on strength. This is your standard Western style programming and it works very well for intermediates and beyond. Now, I personally prefer more traditional block programming, but there's no doubt that this style of Western programming has worked for decades and many thousands of lifters have benefited from this style of programming structure. It works and it's a good way to do it. This isn't actually a powerlifting program, so it's kind of hard to critique in terms of specificity. But that said, the main emphasis of this programming really is to improve your deadlift work capacity in the first eight weeks of the program. And I think that's very important, especially for most Americans who tend to gravitate culturally towards a minimalist style of deadlift training. That said, I don't think you have to improve work capacity with limited rest periods. 
The point of strength training is to get stronger. The point of conditioning is to get in better shape for your sport within the context of whatever your sport requires to be in shape. Now, when you try to mix these things together, you limit the effectiveness of both. If you're going to strength train, strength train. If you're going to condition, condition. When you mix them, again, you're forcing yourself, yes, to accumulate more fatigue because you're limiting your rest periods, but at the same time, you can't use as heavy of weights on your volume work because of how short the rest periods are. And because you can't use as heavy weights on the volume work, the training effect that you get is biased towards other things besides strength. We want to bias those training effects towards strength. So even if we had to decrease the overall volume of this program by extending the rest periods and thus allowing us to do heavier weights, I think it makes it more specific to powerlifting. Because again, you have to lift heavy to lift heavy. That said, you have to love that this program actually has you doing significant volume on the deadlift itself. Most American programs have you doing like one set of five deadlifts per week, which in my opinion is just so inadequate for optimal progress on the deadlift. I'm not saying that doesn't work, I'm just saying you'll get a lot better results if you deadlift more often. Now that said, even though you are doing some substantial volume on the deadlift during the workouts, the problem is that you're still doing way more assistance work than you are doing deadlift work. For example, think about week one. Week one is literally the week where you do the most deadlift volume. You do eight sets of three and a main work set of two reps. So you get 26 reps on the deadlift. However, in that same week, you're doing four assistance exercises for three sets of eight. In other words, you're doing 96 assistance reps versus only 26 deadlift reps. So about 20% of the volume that you're doing comes from the deadlift itself. And these aren't really close variants besides stiff legged -like deadlift. So in reality, the assistance just dominates the amount of volume you do. And again, that's a no-no in terms of specificity in my opinion. You want most of your volume coming from the main movements and the variants of the main movements. This program is just out of balance in terms of assistance and I'd rather see less assistance and more deadlifting. As far as overload goes, this program just features traditional progressive overload. Each week, the weights get heavier and heavier because it's a percentage-based program. So the way that you're making progress here is you're forcing your body to adapt via handling heavier loads over time. Again, it's just basic progressive overload. The more weight you have to lift, the stronger you get. It's kind of hard to say anything about fatigue management for a program that isn't a program, but rather a routine for a specific lift. Because normally you have to take into consideration how the deadlift training is interacting with the squat training and maybe your conditioning or whatever else you're doing. But on this program, we can't do that because it's just about the deadlift. Now, that said, in terms of fatigue management, I do think that this program is a great option for those of you who are conditioned to minimalist style deadlift routines and you're looking to transition into more regular workloads. Because again, in my opinion, it's just ridiculous to be doing one set of five per week on the deadlift. It's suboptimal, it's not enough work, and it doesn't result in maximizing your potential on that lift. So. If you're a younger guy, this is going to be an ambitious program, especially in terms of the assistance, in terms of recovery, but if you can get through it, you're probably going to make great gains and it's going to help you make that transition from one set of five per week on the deadlift to doing more and more volume and possibly more sessions as well. As you guys know, I'm personally biased towards doing multiple sessions on the deadlift per week. I like to see two. However, this is a, a one time per week program with a high amount of volume. That's not my preferred approach. I'd rather see you guys split it up into two sessions. I think it's easier on recovery and I think it works better. And of course, I'd like to see less assistance as well, but that's not necessarily relevant here. Now, in terms of fatigue management, if you are an older guy and you're conditioned to doing lower amounts of deadlift volume, this is probably gonna to be too much for you. I don't think you'll be able to finish it. And in fact, if you just have subpar recovery in general and you're conditioned to low deadlift volume programs, if you try to do this while dieting or something like that, I don't think you're going to be able to finish. So as far as the fatigue management goes on this program, you have to be in the right demographic or the results are going to be very variable. So if you're a younger guy who's conditioned to lower deadlift volume and you're looking to make that transition and you're not going to try anything stupid like do this program while dieting and doing small love for squats at the same time, you're probably going to see great gains. Now, if you're an older guy, you might not even be able to finish this program. And for those of you out there who already pulled two or three times a week 
or you just do higher volume programs in general, this isn't really a substantial workload on the deadlift itself. So if you're gonna make any gains from the program, it's because the assistance is addressing some weaknesses that you have. So for you guys who already pull a lot, you're probably not gonna get anything from this program, even if you finish it. So like I said, you really gotta be part of the right demographic in order for this fatigue management to be appropriate for you. Now, as far as individual differences go, this program literally cannot rate worse in terms of individual differences. Everybody is doing the exact same program. There are no set ranges. There are no rep ranges. There are no substitutions on the assistance movements. Everything is completely fixed for the most part besides the weight that you pick on the assistance movements themselves. So really, there's no volume out of regulation. There's no weight out of regulation. So unless you can hit the numbers on the program, then you're screwed. <laughs> there's, there's no variation here at all. Now, I normally I just really harp on individual differences and in auto-regulation, but I don't wanna repeat myself and say the same thing that I've said in every other video. So if you guys wanna learn more about auto-regulation and why volume auto-regulation is important, and even intensity auto-regulation as well, I'm gonna put a link to a review I did of Mike Teixeira's reactive training systems and you can learn more about these concepts there. Suffice it to say that it just isn't a good idea for everybody to be doing the exact same thing because we're all different and we respond to different amounts of volume and we need different amounts of intensity on different days and again this program just has everybody doing the same thing every day. There's no room for variations in individuals or variations in your day-to-day -day performance and that's just suboptimal. As for my final thoughts on the Cone Felipe deadlift routine, well, I'm kind of lukewarm because on the one hand, I'm a big fan of the fact that this program, being an American program, actually calls for you to do some good deadlift volume. So for those of you guys out there who need to make that transition from doing like one set of five deadlifts per week to doing multiple sets of deadlifts per week and maybe even eventually multiple sessions per week, this is a great place to start. So under a very specific set of conditions, I would recommend that you do a, a cycle of the Cone Felipe deadlift routine. And that set of conditions is as follows. You're a relatively younger guy below the age of 30 or 35. You're not gonna try and diet and you're not gonna do anything stupid like combine this program with Smolov and you're conditioned to relatively lower deadlift volume and you're looking to make that transition to higher deadlift volumes. Now, on the other hand, the reason why I'm lukewarm about this program is because I think the workloads are a bit inappropriate for older guys who are conditioned to lower deadlift volume. I don't think you're gonna be able to finish it. And then for those of you guys out there who already do higher deadlift volumes, this probably isn't enough deadlifting for it to make any substantial difference for you. I'm not sure you'll even get anything out of it. Also, the program has absolutely no auto regulation. Again, I don't think that this whole rest period idea is specific to powerlifting. I'd rather see you using heavier weights and less volume than uh, accumulating more fatigue via short rest periods. Again, improving work capacity is awesome and important, but you don't need to do it via shortened rest periods. So again, overall, lukewarm on the program. If you fit the right demographic, I think you're gonna get explosive gains from Cone Felipe, especially the first time or two that you run it. But if you don't fit the right demographic, I think it's pretty much a useless program. And because there's no auto regulation, the chances are pretty high that you don't fit the demographic. So again, I would recommend the program if you're a young guy looking to make that transition to higher deadlift volume programs. But otherwise, I look towards other approaches that have at least some auto regulation in them, especially if you're older. All right, guys, the programming series is almost over. So if you have requests, you need to let me know. I only have a few more on my list to do right now, and I'd like to actually be done before June. But we'll see. If you guys have lots of requests and they keep coming up over and over again, I will address them because, you know, I got to deliver for the Power of the Lifting to Win fan base. Now, that said, the next program we're going to be taking a look at because I've received so many requests for it over the entire programming series is Quartz 3x3. We haven't taken a look at any German style programming yet, so I'm really hoping that this will be something new and different and uh, just instructive and entertaining in general because it's not just your typical American style program. Now, if you guys found this content interesting, informative, or entertaining, please like, share, and send it out into the interwebs for me. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to pop on over to the Powerlifting to Win forums and I will address any issues that you do have personally. 
If you're looking for customized, personalized coaching, including how to incorporate auto regulation into your program and how to get optimal gains through proper movement selection, shoot me an email at admin at powerliftingwin.com. The email is in the description box and we can talk more about the Powerlifting to Win coaching services. Subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to check out powerliftingwin.com for more great powerlifting information. Have a nice day.